We are the anchors of Queer News Tonight, and this evening we discuss the queer headlines. Get a behind the scenes look at the super steamy photo shoot for this week's Hotspot Summer Swimwear and Underwear feature. Today, on May 22nd, Queer News Tonight celebrates Harvey Milk Day to honor his legacy as the first openly gay man elected in California and his fight for the LGBTQ plus rights. GLAD's social media safety index shows major platform include uh, major platforms including YouTube and Meta facing or in failing LGBTQ plus standards and numbers with rising hate and content suppression. Queer Planet on Peacock, narrated by Andrew Rannells, explores LGBTQ plus behaviors and nature with expert insights premiering June 6. The Supreme Court refuses to hear a challenge to Montgomery County's policy of not informing parents about transgender students' identities. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only LGBTQ plus daily evening television news broadcasting live and then available on demand. Available on all smart televisions, including Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook. It's time to queer up the news for Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. We are live and literally out of the closet and into the headlines. So many of your important stories we're going to tell this evening on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first live daily LGBTQ evening news show, literally out of the closet and into the headlines on Queer News Tonight. This is the world's first and only unedited live LGBTQ plus evening news show. Whatever happens unique in LGBTQ plus news, you will see it and hear it. Hotspots magazine happening out television network is a non-profit 501c3 media company in the same model of pbs and npr but designed for lgbtq plus community our mission is to support the 11 pillars of our lgbtq plus community we want to inform and educate the key issue of our queer culture the black community latino lesbians and queer women trans student youth seniors hiv aids healthcare business, social justice, and faith. Help us support our community. We are part of one of the largest LGBTQ plus nonprofit media companies in America, Hotspots Magazine and Happening Out Television Network. In 2024, our magazine is celebrating 40 years of the LGBTQ plus experience and our television news, talk and entertainment shows support our mission to educate the LGBTQ plus and broader community. That's right, Ms. Builder. So let's meet tonight's anchors at Queer News Tonight. We'll begin by welcoming Corey Billions. Yeah, I love that name. What's <laughs> up? Corey is a proud LGBTQ plus community member from West Palm Beach. He has served as a pharmacy tech for 10 years and currently works as a peer coordinator at Community Care Resource. Welcome back. How are you? I'm good. Having a good time today. How are you? Good. Good to see you, boo. And I'm about to steal that shirt. I'm just <laughs> telling you, it looks like a blouse, so I'm stealing it. <laughs> Next up, let's welcome the one, the only. She's Bonnie Builder. She's the premier <laughs> South Florida bodybuilder drag queen and the current reigning Mix Marys. A recent graduate of FIU, Bonnie Builder is a trainer and comes to life with a microphone and a wig. Bonnie <laughs> Builder, Hypertension presents the Ultra Ball with audience participation, costume contests, sickening vendors, and Pokemon Rave on June 28th. Tell me what's happening. You just said it. <laughs> I'll see you all there, June 28th. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. <laughs> Next up, let's welcome anchor Dr. Ty Hauser. He's a professor of English and Humanities at Broward College and teaches in the College of Business at Florida Atlantic University. He has served as a visiting professor at colleges in Bolivia, Brazil, China, India, and Spain, and provides an international viewpoint. Ty, NSU Art Museum Cafe and Store of Fort Lauderdale is hosting a When It Rains, We Pour this monsoon. Tell me what's happening. <laughs> so I'm so excited about this because, as you know, we're entering this season where every day at like four we get a rainstorm, right? Yep. Mm. So they're doing uh, uh, when it rains, we pour. Buy one glass of wine, get one free whenever it's raining in Fort Lauderdale. Nice. Oh. So all you have to do is show proof of your ticket for the museum. So go see some great art. They've got some great exhibits coming up. And if uh, if you happen to be there when it rains, 
go get yourself a glass or two of wine. You would have this story. You would. Because you know that Ty has all those receipts in his pocket. Yep, I have it right here. Give me my other glass of wine right now. I'm also getting my educator's discount. Okay. <laughs> AARP is coming up real soon, too, Ty. Get ready. Uh, and of course, there's this bitch. Tonight's lead anchor, <laughs> Faye Watt. She's a radio and television personality and is the host of the Faye Watt Show, the first LGBTQ plus morning program. Mondays at 9 a.m. and then on demand on all streaming and social media platforms. She's also a hostess and MC for many South Florida events. Faye, you're hosting an important event organized by History Fort Lauderdale. Take Pride, a 100-year retrospective of LGBTQ plus milestones. Uh, it's on May 30th, so tell me, what's happening? It's the official Stonewall Pride kickoff. The opening reception is May 30th at 6 p.m. So join us as we recognize our 2024 Take Pride honorees, and these folks are so freaking incredible. And many of them are anchors on Queer News Tonight. Robert Boo from the Pride Center, Misty Eyes of SunServe, she's an advocate, an activist, and a freaking gangster. Mark Gilbert, Gilbert from Outshine Film Festival, uh, David Jones, Robin from our fund, who is just an incredible human. Jacqueline Lorber, my favorite lesbian from South Florida Symphony. Josie Smith Malavai, you also know her as Chef Josie. She's being honored as well. The beautiful Miss Erica Norell, I call her Mother Fish. All right, Andy Rogal from Island City Stage. Kitty Meow, who's an icon and Happening Out alum as well. Steve O. Evans from, um, he's a media mogul from Outclick Magazine. And I will be your host, Faye What? The exhibit runs till June 30th at Galleria Fort Lauderdale. Thanks to Visit Lauderdale, Broward County Cultural Division, Broward Arts Calendar, Goodman Public Relations, and of course, History Fort Lauderdale. Get your tickets today at historyfortlauderdale.org. We are the reporters for Queer News Tonight, and this evening we begin with the queer headlines. The LGBTQ plus community in South Florida and across America is diverse. Our community across the world is vast. And here are the bullet points of the queer news for today, Wednesday, May 22nd. Let's begin with breaking news. Broward County Monarch teachers return to work today after trans volleyball controversy. Monarch High School in Coconut Creek made national news last year when three staff members were removed from their positions after it was found that a transgender student was playing on the girls' volleyball team, a violation of Florida state law. James Cecil, the principal of Monarch High School in Coconut Creek, along with his assistant principal, Kenneth May, and athletic director Dion Hester, returned to their duties at Monarch today after an investigation cleared them of any alleged wrongdoing. I told you last month the Broward School District temporarily reassigned the principal and several other school officials at Monarch High in Coconut Creek after it was revealed a transgender girl played for the girls' volleyball team, a violation of state law. The situation remains under investigation, but the student's family sued the district and the state a few years ago, questioning the constitutionality of the law. The transgender student's mother issued a statement today thanking those who have shown love and support. Jessica Norton goes on to say her family's privacy and sense of safety were taken away and says there is a long history in this country of outing people against their will. She also asked everyone to give her family space to speak to their experience on their turn. Their turn. You know, we remember correctly, this story it happened right up the street from here and it happened a couple months ago. And, uh, you know, this beautiful girl was outed. Right. She uh, she was out to her family, uh, but she was not out at school. Um, you know, this beautiful woman had, um, you know, she had already started. Um, she had been playing volleyball in the same group for two years. Right. Uh, she had started her transitional journey at 11 years old. All right. She was already taking blockers. She had her name changed and her gender changed on her birth certificate. Her ba her parents did all the right things. That's right. Mm -hmm. Who didn't do the right things? The school, the school didn't protect her. When they outed this girl, they're so lucky something didn't happen to her because they put a freaking target on that girl's back immediately. I am glad that these educators are back. We need good teachers. Ty, you can, you know, you can totally support that, you know, that notion. Um, you know, and I can't believe that they were even away from work for all this time when, you know, students in Florida need good educators better than most places yeah. in this country. Um, I'm glad that the parents are suing. They all right? Mm -hmm. right. I'm really freaking glad that the parents are suing. Those parents should be parents of the freaking year. All right. They understand what their kid is going through. They're supporting their kid at every angle. You know, 10th grade, kids. Everybody remembers 10th grade. You're about to finish high school. You're about to go to junior prom. You're about to do, you know, get into JV. You, you remember 10th grade. <laughs> Say that one more time. You remember 10th grade. I remember 10th grade. <laughs> you remember 10th like grade. Vaguely. It sure wasn't. Vaguely. <laughs> 
Okay, 10th grade is a monumental time in a, in a kid's life, especially a girl. You want to be prom queen. You want to yeah. do all these wonderful things. And they halted her. They robbed her from that. You know, I'm glad that the parents are suing and I hope that they get a shit ton of money. Yeah. Well, the thing that bothers me about this story is they were cleared of any wrongdoing. What wrong did, could they have done? Like they didn't. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess they're still in the investigation, but they. I don't think they forged anything no. on her behalf. No, she was right? a girl since second grade. That's in right. School. That's exactly right. And so, and the fine was like a sixteen thousand five hundred dollar fine. They were fined for every competition that she was in, for the school, and then all the faculty and administrators had to go to compliance workshops. Oh, I mean, are we talking? This is this is. I didn't know that. Absolutely oh, crazy right. stuff. Yeah. She's gonna have a rough time her senior year, her junior year, moving forward. Yes. And it's just unfortunate that she has to be forced to live in this uh, this way. And this sets a precedent for um, other educators that if you support uh, trans students, that there will be um, consequences, consequences yeah. for it. Um, they tried to, they did treat this girl like a regular student. She wanted to play the sport, they let her play the sport. Since second grade, yes, since girl. second grade, I, I think she'd be fine competing with the other women, girls on that team. But um, yeah, this this lets the other teachers know, like, oh, if I want to support the queer students, the the students who aren't uh, on the line, then there will be consequences for that, and that's a that's the time when it's and that's needed. a problem, especially exactly. when your teacher is usually your safe space. Yeah. You know, we all had that. I remember, bitch, don't tell me, okay? <laughs> and we all had that safe teacher. Yeah. We all knew we were queer growing up. Come on, right? We just didn't know how how far we can get to at that time, right? Oh. But I had my drama teacher, and I knew that I could be my true, authentic self in her classroom, mm -hmm. right? That same drama teacher today would think twice before helping any of us. Sad. You know, that mm. sucks. Mm. Next, let's queer up Hotspots magazine. Yes, give me some good loving right here. Show me some hot bods. Yes. Okay. Behind the scenes, a first look of swimsuit photo shoot for the new Hotspots mag. Summer may not officially be here, but the temperatures are already in the red hot ha ha here in South Florida. That means pool parties and hot boys. And Hotspots magazine has you covered in the newest issue with a special feature that used Fort Lauderdale's iconic Grand Resort and Spa as the backdrop for the photo shoot of swimwear and underwear, including brands like Rough Skin, Ethan Underwear, Jay Castell. I think Ty's wearing those right now and a whole lot more. You'll definitely want to pick up the new issue to see the hottest new looks and Speaking of those looks, we're showing you exclusive behind-the-scenes footage of the photo shoot done by Queer News Tonight anchor Dale Stein, featuring models Phoenix Lenore, Ali, Jose, Kyle, Alberto, Tavarius, Carlos, and of course, the gorgeous Damien Lenore. You won't want to miss this feature of Hotspots Magazine. See all these amazing pictures when you get your new issue when it hits stands tomorrow, this Thursday. And I am all about this. You know, I, the other day I, I texted Dale because I needed something. He's like, I'm busy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he tells me that, right? It was never, never. And then he just takes like a quick picture and I'm like, oh, that's why are you busy. And I, when I asked him for behind the scenes shots, I was asking for more personal behind the scenes <laughs> But these are fantastic, and it gets me excited for that fact that summer's here. Yeah. You know, that pool parties are here, that all the boys are getting ready to be in their littlest Speedos ever, and I'm here for it. And if you follow Miami Gay List, you know that Dale knows what he's doing when he's taking <laughs> oh, a picture. Yeah. Those pictures oh, are yes. I've been in his camera a couple of times. He's a professional. Also, a lot of my friends are in that shoot, so I'm wondering Aww. where the fuck my text was. <laughs> definitely available. I definitely like going to the Grand, which I believe this is this is where it was shot, and I can definitely fit into those speedos. You Just totally check my could. Instagram at Bonnie Builder, and I will show you. Just saying. <laughs> I, I have can. a feeling Bonnie Builder is going to be on the next one. I should be. Actually, this is going to be. I will say, um, with this being the cover, this is the second sexiest cover of Hot Spots this year. You look good. Second uh, to only. First? My beautiful cover, <laughs> February, the February Black History Month issue, <laughs> where I was in and out of drag. Uh, the boys tried, but they could never. You know, it's hysterical because her cover is beautiful. If you didn't see Bonnie Builder's cover, it's all over her social media, so find it, right? So she went and you picked You gotta up, have something. She, you gotta <laughs> she went and picked up all the hotspots that she could find anywhere. And like the following week, I saw the same hotspots on stands. And I was yep. like, what the F? Wait a minute, that was last week's. Nah, it's this week's too. We're gonna repeat. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna see it next week too. <laughs> we love you, Bonnie. Next, pick, up, pick up your new hot spots, please, tomorrow. Next, let's queer up the road to Stonewall. Queer News Tonight honors trailblazer Harvey Milk. Harvey Milk 
became famous in 1977 when he was the first openly gay man elected to public office in the state of California. His outspoken and outrageous demeanor when running for office caused many in the LGBTQ plus community of San Francisco to resist his campaign. He persisted, leading the public fight against anti-LGBTQ plus initiatives. He won a position as city supervisor during his 11 months in office, he sponsored a bill that banned discrimination in public accommodations, housing, and employment of the basis of sexual orientation. The bill passed by a vote of 11 to 1 and was signed into law by Mayor George Moscone. The vote against the bill was cast by Dan White. After clashes with Milk and other city supervisors over a drug rehabilitation center, White resigned on November 10, 1978. And on November 27th, he would go on to assassinate both Harvey Milk and Mayor Moscone. Even after the assassination, White had the support of San Francisco police and was acquitted of first degree murder. This led to the White Night riots where the city's LGBTQ plus community burned down City Hall and lit several police cars on fire. These events are often considered the start of the modern LGBTQ plus rights movement in the U.S. And this is why every year we celebrate Harvey Milk Day on his birthday, today, May 22nd. Learn more on the life of LGBT LGBTQ plus icon Harvey Milk and how important his mission is today for the Harvey Milk Foundation at MilkFoundation.com. There's very few icons that stand out and Harvey Milk is a great one. He's on the political side. There's a lot of people talking and yelling in the background, but when you're actually in it, making changes mm. on the laws and the initiatives and things like that, it's more important to have those people. And one of the first ones to do it, right? I mean, we're talking about the 70s here. I'm going to I'm going to out myself as the oldest one on on, <laughs> on the screen right oh, now. That was obvious. I it? was <laughs> <laughs> This tablecloth is blue. <laughs> but so I was born in the 70s, right? I don't remember this but I was born mm -hmm. so uh, we need to tell these stories so that we remember these stories and you know obviously that's part of our mission here at happening out is to tell our stories so that we remember our stories and without being able to tell the story of Harvey Milk and how important he was and what happened uh, in the 70s uh, that that means that we're going to uh, be in a better position to not repeat those problems even though sometimes it seems like we are yeah yeah. You know, so I was at Diversity Honors a couple of months back and, um, you know, the Harvey Milk Foundation and Stuart Milk are, you know, a huge proponent of that. And so I was able to interview uh, Stuart for a couple of minutes and I asked him, you know, I said, you know, well, what, what do you think that your uncle would think about all the strides that he's missed out on, that he missed out on mm. because he fought for these strides to happen. Right. And so what he told me, he said, Faye, he did see all those open and out people living an authentic life. And he did see all those cities, states and nations that would etch equality into their laws. For he would not have given his life without seeing and visualizing that dream of that day happening. Wow. Yeah. People don't even talk like that anymore, no. right? I mean, it's like, wow. You know, this man was fighting for our rights, gave his freaking life yes. for the rights that we have today. Yeah. And Sean Penn did a great job playing him. Oh, oh, yeah. Lord. <laughs> For those of my generation, uh, we have to learn about Harvey Milk through media, through books, through movies. And I appreciate films like Milk that taught us yeah. so much about who this man was. We shan't get sick of learning about people of our past because they really paved the way for our future. Yeah. So if you're young, please make it a point to learn a little bit of something about from the way back when, even if it's on TikTok. Well, not that way back. It was, it was a while back. It was a while back. It was a while back. <laughs> you, know, you, didn't, you didn't have color. <laughs> people. Um, but yeah. Is, you, that a, is that a white joke? <laughs> they didn't have colored people. I mean, it was a white man that killed this guy. So like, isn't that when America was great? Bada bing, bada boom. Oh. Allegedly. Allegedly. Right? Somebody send that to Trump. Okay. Ah. Next up, let's queer up technology. Glad report shows all social media platforms except TikTok fail LGBTQ plus safety. Yesterday, GLAAD released its fourth annual Social Media Safety Index, a report which surveys LGBTQ plus safety, privacy, and expression online. For the third consecutive year, YouTube X, formerly Twitter, and the meta platforms of Facebook, Instagram, and Threads all failed the SMSI standards. TikTok, whose score increased by 10 points over last year, received a D plus. The report shows a rising number of hate accounts and right-wing figures with large numbers of followers are major contributing factors. GLAAD Senior Director of 
social media safety, Jenny Olsen said in the press release, quote, in addition to these uh, egregious levels of inadequately moderated anti-LGBTQ hate and disinformation, we also see a, co a calorie problem of over-moderation of legitimate LGBTQ expression, including wrongful takedowns of LGBTQ accounts and creators shadow banning and similar suppression of LGBTQ content. Meta's recent policy change limiting algorithmic eligibility of so-called political content, which the company partly defines as social topics that affect a group of people and or societies large, is especially concerning, end quote. You know, um, I, t I got off Twitter as soon as Elon Musk decided that it was okay to be a fucking racist <laughs> on social media and get away with it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everybody saw the P. Diddy video that was out all over the place last week, and when I posted it on Facebook and called Puff Daddy a disgusting fucking human, I got flagged and taken down immediately. If I would have wow. done that to a gay post, that would have wow. not have happened. Nope. Here at, at Happening Out Television Network, I'm constantly posting things that have queer undertones, right? Stories, political stories, yep. um, any kind of stories. And I'm taken down all the time on social media, not saying a bad word or anything, just because of the queer relevance mm -hmm. to my posting, all right? So it's true. None of these social media platforms are protecting any of us, but we're using the F out of it every, every single day and we're a slave to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I use uh, Twitter for dick and butts, mainly. <laughs> um, that I understand. Though. Yeah, so the, it just makes it easy. <laughs> um, I do have a TikTok. Um, I was active on it until it just became disinteresting. But I do appreciate what the platform has provided for our community. Um, which also means this makes sense why it's being targeted so much. Um, is that still a pending issue? Like The China thing? Yeah. yeah. TikTok has to be sold or else mm -hmm. has to be shut down. That seems very pointed. Um, so <laughs> for, for all the content that I've learned through TikTok about queer movement, queer rights, updates about, around the world, um, I really do appreciate the platform for what it's done. Uh, platforms like Facebook, I... I trauma literally can't mm. instagram is for business and nudes in the dms and again twitter's for dicks and butts That's but like uh, kudos to tiktok thank you for what you're doing for getting a d plus for not yeah, even yeah, getting like a c good e job tiktok plus. you got a d plus motherfucker last time i checked okay that is passing but it's a d plus and my students low. beg for 10 points they're not begging for a d plus <laughs> uh, <laughs> i know right <laughs> so who got the a Ooh, nobody, nobody Corey. that's my point that means every <laughs> grinder you know you know who got you know who got the a a grinder got the A, all right? Because what they put out is what they do. What they do is and what they everyone do. puts out on there. Exactly. <laughs> I show my A on there, yeah. That's under terms and agreement, I think. You have to sign that off when you They made that because up. of me, yeah. I believe it. What's next, Bond? Let's grow up education. Homosexuality is natural as Peacock presents Queer Planet Nature Documentary. A new feature documentary by Peacock narrated by Girls 5 Eva actor Andrew Rannells focuses on nature's queerness. In a statement, Randall said, quote, we've all heard of gay penguins, but this film really opened my eyes to the full spectrum of LGBTQ plus behaviors across the natural world. And what could be more natural than being who you are? I'm excited to be part of Queer Planet, especially during Pride Month. And on Peacock, surely the most colorful and glamorous of all the streaming services. Now, Queer Planet includes footage of flamingos to pansexual primates and sex changing clownfish. It even explores the fauna realm with multi-gendered mushrooms. It features a wide variety of scientists and experts who are questioning the traditional concept of what's natural when it comes to sex and gender. Queer Planet premieres June 6 on Peacock. Our planet is home to over 11 million species. The paparazzi really are everywhere. Everything you were told as a kid is wrong. You make me wanna dance! Gay penguins, bisexual lions, sex-changing clownfish. This is a queer planet. Queerness has always existed. It's only in humans that we have such a stigma about it. The idea of just having two fixed sexes is clearly out of style. Mother Nature is pretty open-minded. Sex is not just for reproduction. It's clear that no matter where you look on our planet, nature is full of queer surprises. <laughs> to be honest, we should all probably get laid a little more than we do.
Well, I will say as a drag queen, I love the planet, but I do hate nature. So I'm glad I can watch this from the comfort of my air conditioned home. This seems <laughs> very uh, topical, educational, and I'm ready to learn a lot from it. Right? I know, uh, you know, I can hear Corey while we're watching the video. Corey's like, I didn't learn that. They have to, uh, that's messed up. They didn't teach me that. No. They got so much unlearning to do, right? Because of how they effed us up as, a, as kids, you know, in yeah. school. Look, you know, let me tell you, over 1,500 animal species engage in same sex relations, all right? Dolphins, lions, sheep, giraffe, elephants, black swans, insects, vultures, lizards, just to name a few. I don't understand why humans? right wing humans, yes. But you know, can you like just feel like the right wing just their heads exploding? All the Trump all the Trump lovers just like seeing they're gonna put this on TV. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, Gays room. Nature. Because it's true. Gays room. Gays no. <laughs> room. No. It, brings, it brings a whole new meaning to the term peacocking. I think. Ah. Uh, but also, when do you get to start a sentence with, we, we're all, we've all heard of gay penguins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually have. And everybody nodded though. When he yeah, said that, it's like, oh yeah, we have. Actually, there's some gay penguins that got married, didn't they? I think you're right. They'll they get a zoo or something. Divorce. Yeah, no, probably. Got Who got the kids? Jim. <laughs> <laughs> They're still fighting over the egg. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next, let's queer up trans rights. Supreme Court refuses to hear challenge to pro-trans Maryland school policy. The U.S. Supreme Court declined on Monday to hear a bid <laughs> backed by the conservative Christian legal group National Legal Foundation to challenge the Montgomery County Board of Education. They were hoping to overturn the district's policy against informing parents if their children identify as transgender or gender nonconforming. The justices turned away the three parents who brought forth the attempt attempted appeal of the Montgomery County Court's ruling holding that they lacked the necessary legal standing to challenge the policy. The policy directs school personnel to help transgender and gender non-conforming students create a plan that addresses their preferred pronouns, names, and bathrooms. And it also bars staff from informing parents of those plans without a student's consent. Well, I think this tells you the whole story, right? These parents don't are not affected by this in any way. Yeah. They have cisgender kids. They're very happy, middle of the road, disgusting people. Uh, and they just want to involve themselves in the lives of other people who, by the way, don't seem very concerned. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, how about the kids' lives? That's who you're ruining in, in all of this, right? Like, that's right? What it should be about. Uh, isn't that what we're always fighting for the kids, the kids, when at the end of the day, you're not? I mean, outing a kid is never okay, especially when, you know, for a lot of people, your safe space is school, right? Because you still haven't gone, come out to your parents. Mm -hmm. They're usually the last ones, all right? There's obviously, there's exceptions to that rule. But for the most part, your parent knows, but, you know, it takes you a little bit of time to come out to them, you know? Mm -hmm. So for a teacher for you for, for a kid to come up to a teacher and tell them this is how I feel this is this is this is what I'm questioning and for the teacher to have to go and tell the parent yeah yeah is icky and no one thinks it's icky yeah. it is it's totally icky and you're bringing up a really good point about what the language of this all of this is it's it's all cloaked in that right-wing parental rights language yep. nothing about kids nothing about Don't students rights me. nothing about it's 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 turning the language around and making it say what it doesn't say. But interesting fact, the Fourth Circuit judge who wrote the um, ruling that they were trying to overturn was a Trump appointee. Oh, uh, surprise. Are we I know, surprised totally surprised, yeah. totally surprised. Ty, what's next? As part of Hot Spots yeah. Happening Out, it's our goal to support our community. We offer amazing trips around the world that help raise funds for charity. We invite you to join us on October 8th, 2024, as we experience life under the Tuscan sun with our Italy hub and spoke trip. Spend 15 days in the heart of Tuscany from just $17.99. Find out more at happeningout.travel slash Italy. <laughs>
take a look around these streets. Do you really think we woke up one day and said, yeah, the world needs more pizza? Nah, just a better one. Better, like the world's best pizza. Jets Detroit-style pizza. Hand-pressed and baked to the thickest, crispiest crunch. You're welcome. Now visit JetsPizza.com and save. Click on Hot Deals for special offers in your area. Jets. Better. Because it has to be. Next, we are proud of our special partnership with Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church here in Fort Lauderdale. Supporting that partnership, we are broadcasting from our permanent set here at Sunshine Cathedral at the Happening Out Television Studios. We broadcast Sunshine Cathedral's Sunday International Service at 10.30 a.m. We finish tonight's Queer News headlines with a segment we call LGBTQ Plus One Minute News. LGBTQ Plus One Minute News lets queer up sports. Bridgerton's John Dick Bailey raises thousands for LGBTQ Plus charity by running a marathon. The famous Hick Hackney Half Marathon in London saw more than 20,000 runners participate this past weekend. One of those runners was openly gay actor Jonathan Bailey, who is known for his role in Bridgerton and his upcoming role in Heartstoppers. He's raised more than 30,000 pounds for the charity known as Like Just Like Us. The group runs an ambassador program for queer youth that helps them learn how to raise LGBTQ plus awareness in schools and enact programs to stop the bullying of their fellow queer students. We need programs like this. There's too much bullying going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. Jonathan Bailey wants to raise something else. I've got an idea. <laughs> yeah, raising thirty thousand, <laughs> raising thirty thousand plus pounds in four hours. That's it. Right. No, no, that's good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> I could raise twenty pounds after this pizza. <laughs> <laughs> LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's crib hell. Peru sees protests after government decree labels transgender as mental illness. On Friday, during International Day Against Homophobia, protesters gathered in the Peruvian capital of Lima to demand the government repeal a decree that characterizes seven genders and transgender identities as, quote, mental illnesses. Gahela Cari, a transgender woman who unsuccessfully ran for Congress in 2021, said that, quote, being gay, lesbian, non-binary, or bisexual is not a disease. It is a human condition, end quote. And I agree with her. Um, being queer has been amongst us since the dawn of time. So I doubt it is a mental illness. Yeah. I think your ignorance is a mental illness. Well, it's sad because, you know, we were Peru a couple of years ago, right, Ty? Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, um, it was being queer was considered a mental illness here. Mm -hmm. And not too long ago, until, uh, uh, up until not too long ago. You know, right. um, and so just seeing this story, Bonnie, also worries me because, you know, we're going backwards in a lot of ways. So mm -hmm. it kind of like shows what our future might be able to look like. If the evangelicals get their way. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little hesitant about the word um, uh, condition. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's not a bad word, but it also has the, the ring of, uh, of, of health issues. Yeah. Right. But I understand the thrust of what she's saying. I think it's just unfortunate that a lot of these politicians are peeking their heads in people's homes. Like what I do behind closed doors does not affect you that right. much. And who I do and how many people I do is none of your business. <laughs> 
Between me and my husband. I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up the world view. Albanian lesbians married in religious right to challenge legal ban of same-sex unions. Albania recently saw its first same-sex union as Alba Amirtav and Adira Mara were married in a religious ceremony and a challenge to the country's laws. The Albanian Family Code defines marriage as, a, as between a man and a woman. Mara argued on her Facebook that the Family Code violates Article 53 of Albania's constitution, which states that, quote, everyone has the right to marry and have a family, end quote. And Mara, you are absolutely right. But I can't stop envisioning hot Albanian lesbians. I thought they were all virgins. Oh. <laughs> and I... Uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I say congratulations. The more love out there, the better the world is. That's right. And the best way to fight hate is with love. And they're going to make love all night, I bet. Mm -hmm. I'm envisioning it right asses. now. I'm envisioning it right no now. Longer now we virgins. have a wet spot on the chairs. LGBTQ+, plus one minute news. Let's queer up the world view. Ten police officers arrested in Argentina after transgender woman murdered. Argentinian authorities have arrested 10 police officers and charged them with hate crime charges in connection with the murder of transgender woman Sofia Fernandez. The legal investigation uncovered not only entrenched institutional violence, but also the ongoing struggle against impunity for hate crimes. According to prosecuting lawyer Ignacio Fernandez, the indictment not only charges the three officers who committed the murder, quote, but also the cover-up and falsification of documents by seven other police officers, end quote. Um, I think Amer America should follow suit, which is criminalizing um, criminal actions, even from our authority figures, including police officers. If they do something that's clearly hateful, racist, homophobic, xenophobic, transphobic, um, they should be penalized for that and not let off with a fucking free vac paid vacation. Yeah. yeah, and by penalized, I mean hung by their penis. By their That's penis. what those oh, people yeah. deserve for, mm. for killing that incredible soul. Mm. LGBTQ plus one minute news. Let's queer up the world view. Turkey's president blames Eurovision for declining birth rates. Turkey's President Erdogan has blamed the Eurovision Song Contest, you heard me right, the Eurovision Song Contest for the country's declining birth rates, accusing it of allegedly encouraging gender neutralization and threatening the traditional family. In a speech following a cabinet meeting, the president called participants of the contest Trojan horses of social corruption. He said he's worked to keep Turkey out of the contest since 2012. Well, I'm sad that Turkey can't be a part of the contest, but when you have um, a failed economy and declining support, what do you do? You go after the gays. Yeah, of course. <laughs> this was the first year that I saw the Eurovision Song Contest, and I got to tell you, it is the gayest thing I have ever <laughs> seen in life. Hashtag Nemo, we love you. <laughs> That's right. I watched a little bit of the programming, and now I can't give birth, so he may be onto something. <laughs> I don't know what happened down there, but I just can't produce babies anymore. Well, this is today's news <laughs> for the LGBTQ plus community in the world's first and only daily LGBTQ plus evening news show. If our community is important to you, share the news with your friends and family. Are you, like most Americans, part of our very large television audience watching this live LGBTQ plus news broadcast right now on Roku, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV? Queer News Tonight is the only live LGBTQ plus digital television show in the world that is out of the closet and into the headlines. We need your support. If our community is to grow, we must tell our stories and bring them to the attention of the broader world. This is the only place in the world that tells these types of LGBTQ plus stories in motion and sound. That is the passion of Hot Spots Magazine, Happening Out Television Network and Queer News Tonight. I'm your anchor at Queer News Tonight, Faye. What? And on behalf of these LGBTQ plus reporters, the anchors of Queer News Tonight, including Corey Billions, Bonnie Builder, and Dr. Ty Hauser. We will see you daily at 8 p.m. And to our LGBTQ plus world, we wish you good night. Have a good Buenas night.